Children Climbing Mountains, a look at my side of the mountain. The plot. 13-year-old Sam Gribley, resident of New York City, is discontented with the world around him. He doesn't like the oppressive regime of school and work, days scheduled far in advance, doing the same routine over and over, with everything provided simply for him. One night, he runs away to his great-grandfather's farm in the Catskill Mountains. Determined to live off the land and survive on his own, he only brings with him a penknife, a ball of cord, some flint and steel, and $40 he earned from selling magazine subscriptions in the busy streets of New York. On his first night out, Sam gets on a train north of New York in search of his family's abandoned and overgrown farm in the Catskill Mountains. He hitchhikes to the Catskills, and the first thing he must do is find food and shelter. He cannot find the farmhouse, and so spends a lonely first night in his small hemlock lean-to. He catches five trout, but can't manage to start a fire to cook them. Hungry and exhausted, he forfeits dinner and falls asleep on the cold, hard ground in his lean-to. The next morning, he takes a long hike around the area, marking the locations of certain trees and likely looking sources of food. Eventually, he climbs a hill and finds a small cottage near his camp. Living there is an old man named Bill who teaches Sam how to cook his fish and make a fire. As summer passes, Sam learns how to survive and gets used to living off the land. He establishes a house inside a hollow old hemlock tree, which he expands and makes smoother through controlled burning. As the summer passes, his skills and knowledge of the mountains and of survival grow. He learns to live off the land by hunting small game and deer, and gathering a wide variety of edible plants and nuts. He makes his own clothing and bedding with the skins of the animals he catches. Early in the summer, Sam steals a baby falcon from its nest, and he names her Frightful. Frightful isn't much of a hunter at the beginning, but once Sam trains her, she becomes a reliable pet. Sam also befriends a weasel, which he gives the name The Baron, and a friendly raccoon named Jesse Coon James. Although he spends most of his time alone, Sam also meets several humans during his stay. Other than Bill, he meets Miss Turner, a librarian from a nearby town, and a man he calls Bando, who turns out to be an English professor. Sam initially thought the man was an escaped convict, Despite these infrequent interruptions to his solitude, Sam lived a life free in the wilderness for more than a year. During the winter, his father found him, and Sam, his father, and Bando enjoyed a wilderness Christmas dinner. After winter, Sam began to carve out a nearby tree as a guest house, despite asking himself if this was ex the exact opposite of the reason he had moved here in the first place. Soon enough, however, his entire family shows up at his tree. They either want him to come home or to begin living with him, and though neither option is very appealing, Sam is very happy to see them. After observing his new lifestyle and assuring themselves that he is truly all right, his family leaves him. Their visit lasts about a week. The Definition of Children's Literature Children's literature is any writing that belongs to the body of works produced to entertain or instruct young people. These stories have characters that are easy for young minds to relate to. Though the plot may contain fantastic events, the messages contained in the writings have real-world applications and values. Getting children interested in reading at an early age is important. Providing material that is interesting, thought-provoking, and entertaining will help them grow up to be people who enjoy written word and are willing to think more in-depth on theoretic topics. It is important to expand the minds of young people, especially through engaging written word. By giving them multiple choices of reading material and keeping them entertained through it, children's literature has the ability to open the minds of children, allowing them to grow up as well-rounded adults with ideas other than those presented to them directly from parents or other close adults. Children's literature, though often fantastic, can teach children about the lives and customs of foreign countries and enable them to think abstractly. How this text fits. My Side of the Mountain is heavily themed around the idea of living away from society, questioning the need for constant human social interaction, and living in at one with nature. 
It is a story that allows children to experience vicariously the life one might live if they could strongly, boldly step out of their community and into the wild. The book is rife with factual instructions for making everything from fish hooks to leather to a tree house, down to even recipes for a wilderness Christmas feast. From reading this book, children can take away a spirit of appreciation for nature and wildlife, and understand better how different creatures fit together in an ecosystem. While the story itself is fictitious, there is a lot of realism worked into the details, allowing children to take in the story without a lot of wasted information. A fictitious story, but one that could feasibly be true. My Side of the Mountain is a perfect book for children who want to learn more about the outdoors and the roles a human can play in an ecosystem without harming it. About the Author Jean Craighead George was born July 2, 1919, in Washington, D.C., and raised in a family of naturalists. Her entire family, including parents, siblings, and secondary family members, were students of nature. They spent weekends camping together in the woods near their Washington, D.C. home. Family activities included climbing trees to study owls, gathering edible plants, and making fish hooks from twigs. Her first pet was a turkey vulture. Considering all this, it's really no surprise that Jean George has centered her life on writing and nature. She has written over 100 books. In 1960, My Side of the Mountain won the Newbery Honor Book Award. In 1991, Miss George became the first winner of the School Library Media Section of the New York Library Association's Knickerbocker Award for Juvenile Literature, which was presented to her for the consistent superior quality of her literary works. Teaching this book this book is an excellent example of the benefits, as well as the consequences, of independence and the abandonment of structured society. By teaching, reading this book to children, or even allowing them to pick it up on their own, we give children a chance to think critically about their own lives, and how, if given a chance to live in Sam's shoes, they might handle the tasks and trials he goes through. In conclusion, it is important to expand the minds of young people, especially through reading. By giving children many subjects to read about and situations to think about, children's literature has the ability to open the minds of children, allowing them to grow up as well-rounded adults with ideas other than those presented to them directly from parents or other close adults. Though often fantastic, children's literature can teach children about the lives and customs of foreign countries and enable them to think abstractly. Books like My Side of the Mountain allow children to learn about things they may never have the chance to experience firsthand. By doing so, they give children the ability to think about more practical things from different perspectives. This is an important skill for rational adults to have, which is unfortunately not widely seen currently.